When we talk about professionals, just for clarity, I'm thinking of accountancy, I'm thinking of law. So we're talking about occupational groups that have exams, they have training, and these act as barriers to entry. So it's really important to remember that actually professions are in the discrimination business. Now, we want this. As a society, you want to know that a doctor or a lawyer has been through an elaborate system of training. That's, that's really important. It becomes a problem if these professions, instead of discriminating on things like intellectual potential or expertise, they start discriminating on things like ethnicity and gender. What you'll find is that some of these um, organisations, they actually cultivate an identity that excludes these groups that I was talking about. So a number of ways that this can manifest itself is people actually self-select. So they will opt, they will look at these professions and they will opt out. They will say, okay, that doesn't look like it's for me, so I won't get involved. Also, these professions, they tend to choose their candidates from Russell Group universities. And typically speaking, what we find is that minority ethnic groups are underrepresented in, minor, in Russell Group universities. And there's a recent report actually from the LSE which shows that minority ethnic groups are less likely to be even offered university places compared to their white counterparts. And to extend that a little bit more, it's really important to understand the nature of the ethnic penalty. So when I say ethnic penalty, when you consider minority ethnic groups in the workplace, what you find is that typically when you control for things like age, education, location, minority ethnic groups tend to be paid less than their white counterparts. There's actually a hierarchy. And in this hierarchy at the bottom, you've got black African, black Caribbean, and also Pakistanis. Well, culture is actually really important in these circumstances. So most organizations will actively cultivate a culture. So if you think of it, that, uh, that's related to their organizational behavior, it's related to their values as well. Now, the issue comes is when these cultures don't welcome or celebrate people who don't meet the requirements of a pre-established stereotype. So for example, if someone's got dreadlocks or has got a turban or has even got dark skin, that may not constitute or agree with the established professional appearance that is within that organization. One is that individuals are very proactive and deliberate. So they take proactive steps to managing their career. It's not an accident that they are where they are. And this involves taking steps that ensure that they're not sidelined or siloed, and also make sure that they don't reach a plateau, which is what happens with lots of people from minority ethnic backgrounds. So these people are very deliberate about what they do. So there's a lot of planning involved. Um, the next thing as well is that they also, they always look for support and they look for help even if it's from non-traditional roots or areas. So these are the types of people who you know, listen to podcasts, they read books, they actively go out to participate with people who they think can help them. This is something that I'm finding from all, all these people who are successful professionals and successful leaders. The idea of measuring is a first step, I think. A lot of organizations don't measure this properly. Uh, what Peter Drucker says is what gets measured gets managed. The second thing I would say, and this is what I say to organizations who I speak with, is why are you interested in diversity? So try to understand what, what the driving force is behind that. So is it to do with legislation? Do they want to try and adhere to the legal requirements of the organization? Is it a strategic imperative? Is it strategically important for an organization to be able to, to have diversity in order to grow? Or is it in line with their uh, values, which we talked about earlier? Mentors and networks have been established as being crucial to career success. In fact, mentors are so important that organizations will set one up for you. They'll arrange this for you. Um, now, it's useful when we think of mentors to actually break it down into its constituent parts. So we've got career development, and that's related to the, the particulars of how to perform a task. And then there's psychosocial support. That's related to the more intimate, caring side of a, of a nurturing relationship. So for a true mentor relationship, you need both the career development and the psychosocial support. What the research tells us is that minority ethnic professionals have difficulty securing both career development and psychosocial support.